Assembly language is the language that computers speak. It's not C, it's not Python, it's not JavaScript. And before you say, well, actually, triple L, computers speak machine code. We all know that assembly is the human readable version of machine code. And while assembly may seem like an alien language, it's actually really easy to learn. Once you know how to do it, you can show off to your friends on how big your brain is and how cool your programming knowledge is. Today, we'll be writing baby's first 64-bit assembly program, and it'll only take us 10 minutes. And please follow along because you can do it too. Now, before we actually get started coding in assembly, we have to talk about a few things that are important to know about the CPU. So if this little square here is your CPU, we'll say CPU, inside of the CPU are a bunch of variables that are called registers. They're just super fast memory that your computer uses to do operations with. The registers are the width of the instruction set. So today we're doing a 64-bit assembly, so every register is 64 bits wide. They have different names like RDI and RSI and maybe R8, for example. All of these are 64-bit registers, and this R here, I think of it meaning really big, meaning that it's a 64-bit register. And also, before you ask, yes, I did lose my voice this weekend, and yes, I did shave my beard off this weekend. It's been a weekend full of events, and thank you for asking. So with these registers, we can do a series of operations on them, one of them being move, for example. So we'll say move RDI, the number 8. That means move the number 8, the constant value, into RDI. We can also move registers between each other. So we can say move into RDI the value in RSI. So these are both movements in and out of registers. Those are pretty simple. And then one of the more important ones we can do are called memory operations. We can move into RDI the value at, we call it the quad word pointer of RSI, for example. So what that means is it says treat the value in RSI as a pointer and then remove the quad word length that's eight bytes or 64 bits remove eight bytes from memory and put it into rdi and then we can do the opposite we can do the same thing in reverse we can say move to the quad word pointer in rsi the value in RDI. So the first one was a load. We took values from memory and put them into registers. Now we can take values that are in registers and put them into memory. So this is a store operation. So with the basics out of the way, and again, if you're a little lost, it's okay. We're gonna write some code now to kind of clear it all up. Let's get into our virtual machine and write some code. Okay, so to get started, we have to install the assembler and the linker that will allow us to compile our assembly code into machine code that runs on the computer. So to do that, we have to run a sudo apt install gcc. By running this, we'll actually get the assembler as and the loader ld. I already have it, so nothing happened here, but just to test that you have it, if you type as assembler, that should hang, meaning it's looking for an input, a file to assemble. So we're good there. And also ld, it should say no input files. If you have both of those that run, you should be able to follow along as well. So now let's actually write some code that we're going to assemble in our program. So in my folder assembly tutorial, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our file. We're gonna say vim assem.s. You can name this file whatever you want. Uh, and here we are, we're in a file that we're gonna actually write our machine code. Now, before we write our machine code, we have to start the file off with some boilerplate code that tells the assembler what to do. So the first one is global start. That exposes a symbol called start to the linker so it knows where our code starts. And also we're gonna say Intel syntax, no prefix. That just makes our code a little easier to read and write for an average human being. So then we can say underscore start and then a colon, and that is where our code is going to start. So if we write this and we get out of here, we're now going to try to assemble our code using the assemblers. We'll say as on our code dot s. We're going to say assem.o, and there we go. So now we have a file called assem.o. Now we need to invoke the linker to actually convert that into an executable elf, because right now, this is an intermediate object. We can't actually run this. We have to use the linker to make it a full elf that runs. We can use the linker itself or we can use GCC. We're gonna use GCC and say GCC tack O, assem, do that on assem.o. We're also gonna say no standard lib and tack static. That makes it so that the binary doesn't get any additional stuff in there from libc and it makes it easier to run. So if we run this file, we are going to get a crash. And there's a reason for that. We haven't told the binary how to properly exit. So we can go back into our file here and we can do some operations that we talked about in our previous example when I was talking about the registers, right? We can say things like move RDI, the number eight. And we can say move into RSI, the value of RDI. So at the end of this code, 
both RDI and RSI, the registers, will have the value 8 in them. So that's pretty cool. Let's go back and rerun our command. So again, we use AS to assemble it, and we use GCC to compile it. And then we can use that and run the programs, and you're going to see we get a crash again. So those operations actually did happen under the hood. But when it got to the end of our code, it didn't know how to exit our program. You may be asking, you know, we have these operations to move values in and out of registers, in and out of memory, but how do we make the computer do something? How do we make it print data or properly exit our process or do something that matters to us as human beings? To do that, we have to invoke what is called a syscall. And the actual instruction in assembly to do that is called a syscall. Now, it's a little more complicated than just typing the word syscall. We have to set up the registers in a particular way that the kernel beneath us understands what to do. What is the question that we're asking the kernel to do for us? So what I'm looking at here is what is called a syscall table. This is a list of all the operations the kernel is able to do for us when we invoke a syscall. And as you can see here, we have things like sysread, syswrite. We have sysexit in here somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. I'm pretty sure it's like syscall 62 or something. 60, there we go. So you'll see that we have all these things we can ask the kernel to do for us. The way we ask the kernel to do them is before we invoke the syscall, we have to set up the registers in a way that the kernel recognizes our command. So here we have the register RAX. That means, for example, to do the sysread operation, we put the zero into the RAX register. We also put the file descriptor number we want to read, the buffer we want to read into, etc. So let's test this out with the exit syscall. Again, it's going to be syscall uh, number 60 here. So we put into RAX the number 60, and then into RDI, we put the error code we want our process to return with. So let's let's try this out. So we said we wanted to put the number 60 into RAX, and then into RDI, we wanted the error code. And I'll show you how to check that at the end of this run. I'm going to try the number 69 real quick. So let's do that. And we're going to reassemble our program. We're going to run GCC on it. And then if we run our code, our program didn't crash. And the reason for that is we told it how to exit. We gave it the instruction from the kernel to exit. And now we're going to check the exit code to see if it's actually doing what we asked it to do or something else. So we'll do echo dollar sign question mark. And boom, the return code is 69, which means that this is the code that we ran. So let's level this up. Let's add another layer to this. Let's make the program print the string hello world. The way we do the hello world operation is we're going to invoke a syscall called syswrite. We're going to put one into Rx to do that. We're going to write out to the standard out file descriptor, which is file descriptor number one, in out an error, 012. And we're going to write out a buffer that contains our hello world string. And also we're going to put into RDX the number of bytes to write. So let's add that into our program real quick. So we're going to leave this in here because this is actually just us exiting. So we'll add a little comment here. We'll say this is the sys exit call. And then we're going to do the sys write call. To do the sys write sys call, we have to do a few things. Again, first we have to tell RAX what sys call we're doing. So we move one into RAX. We need to put the file descriptor into RDI. So remember, standard out is file descriptor number one. So we'll also put one here. Then we're going to move into our SI, the address of the buffer that contains our string. So this is actually going to be a new operation called load effective address. We're going to load the effective address into RSI of our hello world buffer. And we're going to define that here in a second. And then finally, we move into our DX, the length of our buffer, which is just going to be 13. We can hard code that into our code right there. And then we'll invoke the syscall, and then we'll go from there. Now what we can do down here is we can create a new symbol called hello world with a colon. And we're going to say it's an ASCII string zero delimited. That'll be hello world exclamation point new line. And then a zero will come at the end of that like C is supposed to have. So we can do that. We can save it. We can quit. And now we'll do the same thing as before. We can type AS to assemble our program. Oh, it didn't like my comments. Hold on. I think it's a double backslash here. Yeah, let's try that. It's either double backslash or a pound sign. Okay, double backslash is good. GCC, and now we're going to run our program. Hello world. Uh, we missed a new line, so it's actually going to be 14 characters. Let's fix that real quick. Instead of 13, it's 14. We'll do AS. We'll do GCC. We'll run it again. Hello world, all done at assembly. Assembly isn't that hard. I hope you learned something today. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next low level tutorial. Talk to you then.